Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is the A Plus Tutor. Today, we're going over transformations of parent function. All a transformation is when we move one function to somewhere else within the coordinate plane. So there are four transformations that we can make. We can move a function right or left. When we move a function right, we subtract that value from our x, and when we move it left, we add it. So whenever we're looking at whatever's happening on our x, we want to say the opposite to know whether we move right or left. So minus means we move right, and plus means we move left. We can move functions up or down. Now when we move up or down, that's going to stay consistent with the sign we see. So when we add some value to our function, we move that function up, and when we subtract, we move it down. We can reflect our functions. So we can reflect these over the y-axis or over the x-axis. So when we multiply our function by negative 1, that's a reflection over the x-axis. And when we multiply our x by negative 1, that is a reflection over the y-axis. And the last thing we can do is stretch or shrink a function. So we're multiply our entire function by some value. When the absolute value of that number is greater than 1, we're going to stretch that vertically or make it very, very long. And when that number being multiplied by our function is between 0 and 1 or a fraction, we're going to compress that value and it's really going to grow horizontally instead of vertically. So it's going to get wider. Let's look at an example of this. Let's take the parent function f of x equals x squared. That function is a parabola which looks like this. And let's look at our table of values for this parabola. Between negative 2 and 2, our values are 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. First, let's look at a move right or left. Let's move this function two units to the right. So our f of x becomes f of x minus 2. We use minus because we're moving to the right. Whenever we move right or left, we do the opposite sign than we would think. So we're going to do f of x minus 2. Everywhere there's an x, we're going to put x minus 2. So our function becomes f of x equals x minus 2 squared. Our new table of values becomes negative 2, 16, negative 1, 9, 0, 4, 1, 1, and 2, 0. And when we move that entire function to the right, we see that shift in the graph. Next, let's move our function down one unit. This goes from f of x minus 2 to f of x minus 2 minus 1. So our function f of x becomes x minus 2 squared minus 1. Let's do our new table of values and move that down one unit. Now, let's reflect this. And since we've moved it already, we're actually going to reflect this over our vertex. But typically, we're reflecting over the x-axis or over the y-axis. So in this case, it's a reflection over the x-axis. So we're going to multiply our function by negative 1. This becomes negative x minus 2 squared minus 1. Let's rewrite our table of values and draw that reflection. Last, let's stretch this function by a factor of 2. So we're going to multiply our entire function by 2. So our function becomes negative 2 times x minus 2 squared minus 1. So when we stretch that, we have our new table of values, and our function is stretched vertically. Given a graph, let us identify the parent function and write what the transformed function is. We have this function, which is our upside down v. That v shape is our absolute value function. So the parent function is f of x equals the absolute value of x. 
This function is moved two units to the left, so we go from f of x to f of x plus 2. When we move left, we add 2. And then it's reflected over the x-axis. So it goes from f of x to negative f of x, or negative f of x plus 2 equals negative absolute value of x plus 2. This means our function is negative the absolute value of x plus 2. Next, we have this kind of s-looking function. Our parent function is f of x equals x to the third. This looks just like our x to the third function, except it is moved down one unit. So f of x becomes f of x minus 1, which means our new function is f, is f of x equals x to the third minus 1. Next, we have a function with two asymptotes, and it is an odd function, which means this is our reciprocal, this is one of our rational functions, and the parent function is f of x equals 1 over x. This function is moved right one unit, so we do x minus 1. and then moved up two units, so then we add two on the outside. So our new function becomes f of x equals one over x minus one plus two. Last, we have this shape. Our parent function is our cubic function, or f of x equals the cube root of x. This function was moved right one unit, so we did f of x minus 1. So we took f of x minus 1, because when we move right, we subtract. And then it was moved down two units, so then we would subtract 2 from the entire function. And our transformed function becomes f of x equals the cube root of x minus 1 minus 2. Now, given a function, let us draw the indicated function by performing transformations on our parent functions. We have the function f of x equals 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 3. Our parent function is f of x equals x squared. The minus 1 tied to our x means we're going to move it right one unit, move our parent function right one unit. Plus 3 on the end means we move our parent function up three units. And then the 2 in front means we stretch our function vertically by a factor of 2. So our table of values goes from negative, goes from 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 2, 21, 11, 5, 3, and 5. And this is what our function, our given function, looks like. Next we have f of x equals the square root of x plus 1 minus 2. Our parent function is f of x equals the square root of x. The plus 1 tied to our x means we move left one unit. And the minus 2 on the outside means we move down 2 units. So we take our parent function, move left 1, down 2, and this is our given function. Next, we have f of x equals negative cube root of x minus 2. Our parent function is the cube root of x. Minus 2 tied to our x means we move right 2 units. And that negative on the outside means we are going to reflect this over the x-axis. So by performing these transformations, this is what our transformed function will look like. Last, we have f of x equals 2 over 3 times the absolute value of x. Our parent function is the absolute value of x. 
that two thirds in front means we're going to shrink our parent function by a factor of two over three. Because it is between zero and one, it's going to shrink our function. Let's compare our table of values. And this is what our transformed function looks like. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please comment down below what other topics you'd like for me to review. You can also find me on Instagram or on Facebook at the A Plus Tutor and leave me comments there. See you next time.